Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer with Dan Thomas. This is Pastor Dan Thomas. I hope you are doing very well this morning. We're going to jump right in. But before we do, be a digital evangelist and ambassador and share the video. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and like the YouTube uh, broadcast there. And also go ahead and click share. The option to copy the link will come up. You can share it and then you can send that link to someone via messenger if you're on facebook tag someone in the comments share it it'll go as far as your organic reach will go there on facebook we really appreciate you let's rehearse our anchor scriptures number one jeremiah 33 and 3 call to me and i will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know and then first john chapter 5 verses 14 and 15 now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have whatever we ask. Now, that's the that's the part, whatever we ask. We know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Let's go ahead and see who is in the room this morning. I see you guys coming in. I really appreciate you. I uh, think it's an amazing and a great thing. Let's go and see who was first in the room this morning. Now, of course, let's look at this. All right, here we go. Okay, now I haven't done this and I need to start doing it even more. Let me give the countdown. Here we go, or oh, the drum roll there. The first person to comment on YouTube this morning is Ruby Hassel. Come on, come on. You, you know that there is just, you know, you know, Carolyn's been doing it, but Ruby says, hey, I'm getting in this morning. And the first person to comment on Facebook, of course, is Carolyn Banks. So at least we got two different people this morning. All right. All right. You guys go ahead and get in there or try to get in there. Brooke says good morning. Uh, Dwayne Edwards says good morning. My mom says good morning. Angelina says good morning. Talola is in the house. Laila is in the house. Lorraine is here. Bless you. Karen Ridgeway is here. Shasa and Acacia are here. Shauna is here. God bless you. Mama Wilma Johnson is here. Denise is here. Bless you. EJ is here. God bless you. Thank you for all of you that are here this morning. And then, of course, we give congratulations to uh, Ruby and Carolyn this morning for being the first ones to comment and say good morning. Just good. It's just good, 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 good. Okay, so here we go. We're getting ready to get into some praise and some worship, but I want you again, of course, to make, uh, and I'll tell you what we're, what we're gonna be talking about when we come back uh, after this, but I just want you to keep your joy on and your expectation high and just to make God an audience of one, but keep your joy on and your expectation high because you, it could happen any day that here, here's, here's the thing. You know how when you're watching a movie and then there are parts of the story that you don't know that they don't bring you into until later on in the movie and the story. And then even when they bring them in, you can't see how that part of the story is connected at all to the part of the story that you know about. That's what life is like. Because something could be going on over here and you just not know it. And God is going to hook it up at the right time. So that's that's the great thing about it. Uh, see, my man Morgan is here. Bless you. So just 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 keep the faith, as they say. Keep your faith in him. Everything will turn out the way it's supposed to on time, according to God's promise, according to God's promise. All right. I'll be back right after this. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Let's worship together. Is it a right to brag on God for a minute? Yeah. Nobody's been better to us than God. Put your hands on it. Yeah. Plan 
for me goes beyond my wildest dreams. Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah. So strong, so mighty, and my God, plan for me goes beyond my wildest
We thank God that we do have it. We do have it. And he already did it. He just, when, when the promise was made and the expectation was birthed in our hearts, he made us aware of what he already had for us. And we're going to get into that today, but let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We love you. We honor you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies. I pray for my brother and my sister today, the Lord, that whatever they're facing, they know that you're more than enough. And so are they to get through it. If you decide not to get them out of it, but you decide to take them through it. Father, we thank you for all of the things that we're going to learn as we grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you. You're you're amazing. You're an amazing God. And you keep making ways over and over and over again, ways that we cannot see. And then you make ways out of no ways when it seems like our back against the wall and it's certain that we're going to lose and the bottom is going to fall out. You come into it. So we father, we thank you. We we ask this morning that you would illuminate our minds and that you would not only challenge us, but you would change us from the inside out, plant seeds that will have much fruit and that that fruit would remain. We just don't want to go through the motions, Lord. We want to be continually conformed to the image of your dear son. We want our lives to be a living example of who you are. And so that not only that there are believers who are benefiting from what you're doing in our lives, but Lord, even pre-believers, people who have not yet awakened to the relationship that you want with them, that you have with them. Let us be a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. That's what we want. That's what we want in every single thing that we do, in our job, in our families, wherever we go, at our churches, wherever we are seen, we want Father, we thank you. We want to be a good representation of who you are. And we bless you. We thank you for it. We thank you for morning prayer. We thank you for everyone that's that's been getting up. Father, I pray that you pour out a blessing on your people for exactly what they need, what they want, that there will be an overflow, that they would even have to give some of, the, some of it away. And Father, someone needs to know that you are real, that you haven't forgotten about them, that you haven't abandoned them. We know that you haven't, but Lord, they need to be reminded with a blessing. Give gifts and good surprises. They're those who've been waiting a long time, as faithful as they can. Lord, be the blesser that you are. And we thank you for it. We honor you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody clap your hands. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
amen and amen and amen. Now, I'm not sure that this will be a familiar passage of scripture. Maybe if you've been hanging around morning prayer, but, and we may have touched, I don't, I don't know to what degree, but the Lord just put this back on my mind. And, and this is Genesis chapter 18. Now we know that God spoke to, uh, to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 about Isaac. But then God himself visits Abraham in Genesis 18. And, and I just want to I just want to say. And before we, we, we get into this. There there are some things I believe that God is doing and and has done that we probably need to make ourselves aware of. And so this is a. Uh, if, if you if you go back to Genesis 15 and what I want to do, here's my goal. I know that you believe God. But after you believe, because really it's more important that, you know. And I've talked about this somewhat. Uh, in the past, but I want to I talk about moving from believing to knowing. So I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to challenge myself as well. And God is putting this on my heart. So if you if you want to know where I get that from, hey, move from believing to knowing. OK, I actually get it from John chapter eight, beginning at verse 30. So let me start there. So John chapter eight, beginning at verse 30, says this as he spoke these words. And this is speaking about Jesus. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now, I believe it's the King James Version that says, if you continue in my word. But I want you to notice the switch as he spoke these words. This is verse 30 of John chapter eight. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. See, they started out believing and then they went to knowing you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now, let's let's reverse engineer this verse, if you will. And I want to show you some things before we get back into Genesis. He says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So the consequence, the result of knowing the truth is freedom. That's the consequence. But what comes before truth is becoming a disciple. And he says, if you continue in my word or abide in my word or live in my word. So he's saying belief is a good starting point. But I want you to take that belief and begin to live in my word, abide in it, stand on it, continue in it. And when you do that, the truth is going to be revealed to you. And then you'll have freedom. Did you notice the progression of the text? He says, if if you abide in my word, I'm glad you believed because he spoke to the Jews who, who had believed on him. Verse 30 says, as he spoke these words, many believed in him. And then he said to the Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. Now, the word disciple means it's a lifelong learner of another. So they're going to continue in the words of the Lord Jesus. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. So that tells us also that the truth is really only revealed to disciples. Come on. The truth is only revealed to disciples. There are some people who awaken to what Jesus has done for them and how much the father loves them. But then they don't continue in those in, in that way. They just say, OK, I got it. And then they go on. Now, that person may go to heaven, but truth is not revealed to them. And then there are places in their life where they still may have bondage. This is just real talk. This don't have nothing to do with grace, new covenant. You 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 go do something 
and then you never get all the way into it. You're never going to get the benefits of it. And Jesus says, if you continue in my word, then you are my dis my disciples. Indeed, you're not just a disciple just because you receive the life of the Lord Jesus. That's not what makes you a disciple. I'm following him. Sometimes we follow him. And this is not against anybody. I don't want anyone to take this the wrong way. It's just the truth. I'm just going to use a modern day analogy. Sometimes we're following Jesus like we follow people on Instagram. And when they say something we like, we click follow. When they say something we don't like, we click unfollow and we follow and unfollow. We follow and unfollow. Please understand this has nothing to do with salvation. This is about continuing. You're saved. And no one can come and unsave you. But we're not always following, right? We're not always following Jesus. So we need to, so following Jesus, making that decision to follow him through everything that you go through is what causes you to be a disciple. You are a lifelong learner of another. Once that happens, truth is revealed to you, okay? And that truth makes you free. He whom the son has set free is free indeed. OK, so this is in, this is just important for, for us to know, because what I'm getting ready to say today. About Abraham and Sarah and, and, and believing you want to li live or move from believing to knowing. All right. And so I want to I want to teach and then I want to I want to speak some stuff over your life. So we were in Genesis 18. But let's just go back to Genesis 15. OK, let's let's go back. Let's go back to Genesis 15. And and this is and I, I, I really believe God wants you to know who he is. And for you to know who he is in you, like that, that's it's just it's, just, it's such a big deal Now this is identity talk, of course. This is all identity talk. But let's look at Genesis 15 and 5. It says, then the Lord took Abram. This is before he changed his name to Abraham and said to him, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. Now, God was getting a little humorous there because he's trying to get Abraham to understand the enormity of the blessing on his life and the promise. Now, remember this. God doesn't waste words. God, God doesn't waste words. If God spoke to you or he used someone to spoke to speak to you and he gave you a vision, he gave you a dream. It's something that he wants you to hold on to. He wants you to continue in that word. He wants you to stand on that promise. And so if at all, uh, I want to be able to stretch you today, because sometimes what happens is that we give up on the promise. We stop declaring. We stop we stop listening to like if we recorded it, we stop listening to the prophecy. This happens to everybody. There's no condemnation. But I want to tell you that me going away from the prophecy, me not declaring the prophecy, me not letting it uh, letting it be repetitive in my life has nothing to do with the strength of the prophecy. God still said what he said. God still has this promise over your life. And we need to learn how to begin to walk in it. So this is why I'm saying this. This is this is why I'm bringing this up. Watch this. And this is Genesis chapter 15. And he says, then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. Now, let me relate this to you. Abraham was in his tent and you, you will find this if you read this verse, uh, Genesis 15 to 5. If you read it from the Amplified Version, you will find out that Abraham was in his tent. Now, his tent is an enclosed place. And all he can see is that place. He, he can't see anything. He's got this promise of God over his life that God spoke to him in Genesis chapter 12 and says that your descendants are going to be like the stars of the heaven, the sands of the sea. He he can't receive that in that cult, that that closed place. So in the Amplified version, it gives us to know what these words mean. If God said, come out a little further from the tent. Now, many of you are experiencing some things in your life and you're like, what is going on? This has been going on a long time. This situation is difficult. It's challenging. I didn't expect this. What is going on? Is God calling you out from that enclosed place because he can't talk to you the way he wants to talk to you in that enclosed place because he literally wants you to see something 
different than what you are. I I saw something that well, it, it was a couple of years ago, but this is coming to my mind right now. There was a gentleman who he says, if you're looking for a house, and I got to get back to this. He said, if you're looking for a house, if you're looking for a better apartment or a better living space, he said, make sure that before you close your eyes, even if you're looking at a picture or you go out and you drive around, make sure that the last thing that you really see that you burn into your mind is what you want and not the little place that you're in. Be grateful for the place that you're in. Show gratitude for the place that you're in. Be thankful for the place that you're in, but get another image on your mind so that when you go to sleep that you know that greater is coming and you're telling your subconscious mind, I won't be here for long. I'm thankful I got a roof over my head. I am not dissing this thing at all, but listen, I won't be here. OK, so so you got to get a different image in your mind. You got to burn a different image in your mind. And God was not content with allowing Abraham to stay in this place. And so literally it says he took him outside and then he says, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. Now, you know, you can't count the stars. Counting the stars is an exercise in futility. God knows you can't count the stars. There's so many of them that if you try to do it, then you, you figure out pretty quickly that you lost your starting place. And this is what God is trying to do. He, he's saying, I'm going to now listen to this. This is this is just good stuff. I'm going to bless you so good. You won't know where the beginning or the ending is. That's this is what God is saying this morning. He's trying, he said, that's how many descendants you will have. It was innumerable. He would never be able to count it. And, and, and he was doing, and I know this, I, I want to I get this for you. He was doing what people call a visualization. Abraham couldn't get in his mind while he was in that tent, a picture of what God wanted to do for him and through him. He couldn't see it. So God says, I need you to understand the enormity of what I'm telling you. So look up to the sky and, and, and the stars and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. Now, this begs the question for us. What are you looking at? What, what is filling your eye? What is filling your conscious mind? What is being What image is being burned into your subconscious? What are you looking at? Are you looking at lack or are you looking at abundance? Are you looking at failure or are you looking at success? Are you looking at God's word or are you looking at what you fear? What are you looking at? And God had to change what Abram was looking at. And he wants to do the same thing for you. He wants to do the same thing for me. And many times what we call trouble is really God coaxing us out of that comfortable place. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Is God coaxing you out of that comfortable place? And he's saying, look up, look up, look. That's what he's saying. He's saying, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. He says, I want you to try to see if you can even imagine how big I'm going to bless you. You can't even imagine it. It's going to blow your mind. That's what God wants you to do. Then God comes to him in Genesis 17, verses five and six. And I'll read this from the New Living Translation. He said, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham for you will be the father of many nations. Now, when God changes a name in scripture, it literally means the changing of or the enlarging of destiny. This is Abram to Abraham. Now, the way that you would say this uh, back then, it would be Avraham or Avrahim as opposed to Avram. Okay, now, it, the, the, the B kind of sounds like a V. What God did here, when Abram got ready for his destiny, 
God said, okay, it's time to change your name and literally added a God part to Avram from, from Avram to Avraham or Avrahim. You, 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 you can even see this in the name because God's name, one of God's names is Elohim, meaning he is the Lord. And to protect Avram from anything that will come against him, because here's what you got to know, that God's promised your, your mistakes. Any mistake you make in your life will never be big, bigger than God's promise to you. So what he's doing is when he changes his name, he's guaranteeing the success of his destiny by adding a God part to his name. And you may not have known this, but as you're going through this, one of the reasons you're surviving the way you're surviving is because you've got the Lord's protection. You, 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 you've got the Lord's protection with you. Abraham didn't he. And, and this is why I don't want you to get down on yourself or bring judgment or condemnation on yourself, because this is part of the process that you that you go through. God makes a promise and then. There's some time in between promise and fulfillment, and we get a little shaky around that. And it's just some stuff that we're like, okay, God, like it's it's about time. I I, I really need you to do something. And I know if if you're there today, and and let me just break it down to I'm just going to use some simple language. You've been waiting on God's the fulfillment of God's promise. You don't even know what you're supposed to do anymore. You don't even know how you're supposed to pray anymore. You don't know the first thing from anything. And you're just looking up to heaven saying, what up, though? What's what's going on? God, I need you to move in ways that will just blow my mind. If you're there, give me a hand raised emoji right now. Just give me a hand raised emoji. You're 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 you're, you're, you're holding on. And, and you're saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you. I bless you. I love you. All those great things. But what up, though? Come on. <laughs> Come on. We, we need this blessing. And, 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 there, and there's, there's, no, <laughs> there's no shame in that. Let's, let's go ahead and get it out now. Come on. <laughs> Lord, you said this. And I don't even know what else to do. Okay? Now. Now, with that said, I want you to, to, to listen to the scripture again, because he comes to Abram again, and what he does is he reiterates his promise, okay? He, he, he reiterates his promise, and he said, this is my covenant with you. Now, now I want to I wanna break this down. When God makes a covenant, he doesn't break it. He will always be faithful to his part of the covenant. He said, this is my covenant with you. I'm going to make you a father of a multitude of nations. I'm changing your name. It will no longer be Avram. Instead, you will be called Avraham, for you will be the father of many nations. Now, this is God making a promise. And as I said, even before we went into uh, the worship this morning, that there are other parts of your story that God has not made you privy to, just like you're just like when you're watching a movie, a, a good director, a good writer only brings you in to the other parts of the story that seem disconnected or you don't know about when it's the right time so that you can begin to see the fullness of the story. That's just like your life right now. That's just like my life right now. God is doing more behind your back than he is in front of your face. There's some things that you don't know. Watch this because it's not time for you to know. There's some people you haven't met because it's not time for you to meet them. There are some things that have not happened that you can be made privy to because it's not time for them to happen. And I know that that's a crazy space to be in. And I know that that sounds trivial. And I know that for many of you, that sounds cliche, but it's just truth. It is what it is. There are things that are going on that God has not revealed yet because in your life, you have not reached what the scriptures call the fullness of time. And, 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 and maybe God, what he's waiting on is he wants you to see the awesomeness of what things that he wants to do for you. All Maybe he just wants to get you back to awe and wonder because Abram was having trouble visualizing this 
and keeping that image strong in his spirit. Now, I know that visualize is a trigger word for people because they attach that word to new age stuff. God gave Abram here a visualization. He did. Abram couldn't he couldn't he couldn't conceive in his mind the stars of the heavens and the sands of the sea. So what did God have to do? God had to take him outside out of that comfortable place, out of that enclosed tent. He said, come out a little further. Again, you read this in the Amplified Version. He said, come out a little further. And then he said, look up. In other words, and it's not just about looking up. It's about looking at the right thing. Look at the right thing. What are you looking at? Are you looking at something that's smaller than what God told you? Or are you looking at God's promise? You're looking at what he said. I know we get tired sometimes of rehearsing it. I don't want to listen to the prophecy. I don't want to look at that video. I don't want to listen at that audio. Listen, you better listen to it. Keep that thing strong in your spirit so that when it comes up, number one, you can recognize it and you say, this is my time. Something jumps in your spirit. As a matter of fact, just put that by way of faith and engagement, because everything in the spirit is it's just faith is it's just it's just it's a now thing. It's a now thing. Everything is right. Type in the, the in the in the comments right now. My time is now. Go ahead and type that in the comments, because no, whether something physically shows up in this realm or not has nothing to do with the nowness of God's promise. It has, it has nothing to do with that. And if we can understand time, which I don't have time to get into, but if you can understand time, it's always now. This is why when Jesus shows up to heal people, it's always immediately. It's always right then because God thinks about time differently than we think. The moment you receive this in your spirit, it was done. The moment God said it, it was done. It's done. There's there's nothing that you have to do except for to continue to praise. Don't allow this time in your life to be the time that you drudge through and that, oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Come on. No, no, no. Go ahead and reclaim the joy that is yours right now. I see many of you saying this. My time is now. Forget about when it's going to show up in the natural because you by faith and, 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 and literally it's really his faith in you. He, when he went to the cross, he believed in you so much that your entire life was finished. See, Isaiah 46 and 10 says that God knows the end from the beginning. In other words, God finished you before he began you. <laughs> think about think about what I'm saying. God finished you before he began you. Even all the stuff that you and I are going through right now. God already knew it. The path is already marked out. He made sure that none of the things that you're going through are going to take you out. He walked this path for you. You're experiencing what already was, but at the same time is. Can you follow what I'm saying? You're experiencing what already was, but at the same time is. He knows the end from the beginning. And even though you're in a situation that looks like it's not going in your favor, that's a lie because God already marked out and walked out what you're supposed to be going through. And he knows what the end is going to be. So you can get joyful. You can release joy right now. You don't have to wait. This is why as some person said, I can praise him in the hallway until he opens the door, because in God's economy of time, this has already happened. And this is what confuses the enemy when you and I can praise with real, genuine, sincere joy with disregard to what is currently happening in my life. So why don't you just do this right now and just praise God where you are? Glory to God. Come on, just praise God where you are. Come on, clap your hands. Glory to God. Just, just give him, Father, I thank you. <laughs> Lord, I, Lord, I thank you. And, and this may, there may be some difficulty every day to this, but practice this every day. It's not, 
I'm not telling you that it's getting ready to be easy. I'm not getting ready to tell you that people are going to put pedal rose petals out for you. I'm not saying that. I'm saying practice this. Don't just do this one day and then for the next seven weeks, you don't do it. Practice it every day. Change your spirit. Get a new image in your mind. If God told you that you were going to have a house, you just listen, just literally looking at the house. I'm talking to myself too, talking to my family, just literally just looking at houses, something bigger than what it is. If God told you that you were going to be healed, go find some people who have been healed. Listen to their stories. If God told you that you're going to have a new car, if God told you that you were going to be married, if God told you that you were getting ready to get a promotion, begin to behave in the manner as if that thing is already real. And this is what I was talking about earlier when he talked about believing to knowing. This is the part right here. When, you, when you're moving from believing to knowing, in the middle, you start behaving. You, you start behaving. You start behaving like if God told you, I want to promote you to, to, to managerial stuff, supervisory stuff in, in, the, in, in the company that you are, just start leading from where you are. That's all you got to do. You don't need the position. Start acting like you have it. And God will give you wisdom. And then people will notice the leader in you. If, if you've got a car and maybe you're not taking as good of care of it as you could be doing, right? Start taking good care of your car, saying, I'm getting ready to have this car. See, see, start behaving. Start, start behaving. Many times, and, and I've done it, I'm guilty of it. Listen, I'm transparent, I'm vulnerable about this this morning. Many times I've allowed the thoughts of the enemy based on my external situation to dictate my behavior. And this is why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and my praise shall be continu shall continually be in, his, in, in, his, in my mouth. His, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why is he saying that? It's, it's, a, it's an act of his will. It's, it's an act of his will. And right now, you we may be looking for a feeling, but sometimes it has to be an act of your will. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. You're not going to shake me. You're not going to break me. I'm not going to give up. I'm not. I'm sorry. It's my time and I'm not going to miss my time and I'm not falling uh, into the uh, I'm not I'm, I'm not falling into th those types of things again. I'm going to behave the right way. Don't let time fool you. That, 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 that's, that's what I want to say. Don't, don't let time fool you. you. Uh, the fact, and, and this is Genesis uh, 18. So let, let's, let's find, we'll finally get here. I'm going to stay here. I'm, I'm coming back to this Friday. But just, just so you can hear the story. So God visited Abraham. Reminded him that who we know is going to be Isaac in the future. And, and your Isaac may be something different. But it says, this is Genesis 18 and 1. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees of Mamre as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. After that, you may pass by in as much as you have come to your servant. So he recognized that there was something different. Uh, there was something different about these men. What we're talking about right here is what the scripture calls a theophany, which is where God shows up in scripture before Jesus's birth. Uh, when we talk about Jesus, we also often call that a Christophany, but this is a threeophany. Uh, I mean, a, a a theophany, not a threeophany. That's pretty good. <laughs> but he, he it's a theophany because these men represent Father, Son, and Spirit, and and, and they're coming to Abraham because they they're getting ready to say something to him. And I believe God is saying something through to you through this message. So 
They said, do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly make three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. He took the butter and milk and the calf, which he had prepared, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Now, I want, I want you to understand what's going on because I read this. And when sometimes when you read it, you, you're not necessarily seeing all the details. So he wants to do something for those three men. He wants to honor them. He recognizes that they are divine. And so he runs to the tent and he says, hey, quickly make three measures of fine meal and knead it and make cakes. Everybody, I know I'm having you type a lot today, but just go ahead and type preparation. Type, type preparation because, because if, if it's your time and God is coming down to bless you and bless your socks off in a way that you haven't done before, they're preparing <clears throat> to be blessed. That they, they, they are preparing. They, they're, they are preparing. So Abraham directs her to do something and your preparation is not going to be making a fine meal that, you know, they're, they're, your preparation is taking the promise of God and then beginning to behave in, in, con, in, 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 in alignment with the promise, whatever it is, God says, you're going to be a doctor. Okay. Then you know that you're going to have to go back to school. You're going to be a lawyer. You're going to have to go back to school or you're looking at something else preparation she's preparation then he tells him and he says abraham ran to the herd took a tender and good calf and gave it to a young man and he hastened to prepare it now watch this there's another theme in here is that while you're preparing and i just want to give this to you for everyone because i think it's going to excite you and i think it may even reinvigorate you here they're giving god their best now this is not works because i, I need to make this delineation because it's important this is not you working to get approved by God. This is not you working to, to, to get God to bless you. This is not you working saying, hey, God, look at my report card. I did good. Now you can bless me because I got all A's. This is not that kind of work. When, 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 when you know God has spoken to you and it's been settled in your spirit and it shall be no other way because God said it, when you know that, then that brings the best out of you. Prepare. Because God has done his part in speaking this from one realm to the other. That promise has been conceived in your mind. So now you've been impregnated with the promise of God. That promise is already there. The power and everything that you need to, to bring that to pass is going to be there. So start preparing. God will get behind your preparation. You see, if God said this to me, then there are some things that only God can do. And then there are some things that only I can do. And my part is preparation. My, my part is preparation. And, and also, watch this, there's the element of sacrifice in this because <clears throat> I'm saying, thank you, Lord. And I'm taking the necessary steps to go towards what God called me to do, who God called me to be. Is that, is that making any, any sense to anybody? So, so when you start preparing, heaven now has an obligation to put all of its resources behind you because you're moving and God is moving behind you. Oftentimes, we believe that we're waiting on God. God's promised me something. Lord, I'm waiting on you. And then God is saying, no, I'm waiting on you to activate the promise that I gave you in the earth. And then I'm following you. I'm following you because you're doing this thing and you believed on my word. You've mixed it with faith and you start behaving what you believe. And when you start behaving what you believe, then you move from believing to knowing. And there are little things that God does along the way to increase your faith. So he, 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 he says this to them. Then it says in verse eight, he took butter and milk and the calf, which he had prepared and set it before them and stood by them under the tree as they ate. Now, then they then he said to him, now, here's the thing. Now, here's the reason why they came. Here's the, here, here's the reason why they came. And, and I want I want you to know that. Also, we talked about 
preparation. We talked about sacrifice, but I just saw another element here and it's really worship. It's really you bringing something to the Lord and him delighting in something that you have prepared for him. Listen to verse eight. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. This is this is this is a picture of you worshiping God and God delighting in worship as if he's eating. You know, he, he's, he's delighting in your worship. Listen, practice the presence of God in prayer. Just sitting, just sit in his presence. Say whatever you got to say at the beginning, get that out and then sit in his presence. Because he's going to talk to you and he is going to instruct you and he is going to give you strategy. That's what he's going to do. This, what Abram was doing was worship, preparation, sacrifice, worship. Glory to God. Glory to God. If this is helping you at all, I want you to just give me, I'm, I'm, I'm engaging you this morning. Give me the hand clapping emoji if you needed this this morning. Come on, I, I, this this is this is a right on matter of fact don't give me the hand clapping emoji just type right on if this is the right time message for you just say right on god started dealing uh with uh it was it was through a song uh yesterday uh that i was listening to and a song that we're rehearsing for sunday and the lord just started speaking to me because i didn't know before then because we just finished the series on comparing and contrasting the old and the new covenant. But yeah, amen. Amen. So so again, the, the, the thing is, don't leave here just believing today. Leave here behaving. Think about what's the one thing that you can do that will be in the area of behaving today. Get it in your mind right now that you're going to do it. Whatever it is, whatever it is, if it's a conversation you need to have, if it's a book you need to read, if it's a training that you need to finish, whatever it is. Listen, listen, think about the one thing that you need to do and put that on your to do list every day. This one thing. In the name of the Lord Jesus, don't let the enemy try to diminish any accomplishment that you have, any forward movement that you have, all forward movement is good movement. Now, let's look at verse 9. Here's now here's he, that he he's preparing, he's sacrificed, he's worshiped. Now, God is going to get to the business of what he called him to do and he says, "Okay, I know I spoke to you in Genesis 12. I know I spoke to you in Genesis 15. I spoke again in Genesis 17. Now we're in 18 and I just need to I, because this thing is getting ready to happen and this thing happens in stages." Oh, thank you Holy Spirit. See, we're like, and, and I and told you, I'm like this. I'm like, Lord, what up though? Come on. You said this. Like, you know, sometimes you get to the point, another stage, you know, another thing that I got to go through. Lord Jesus, come on, come on, hurry up. Everybody's getting blessed around me. I know some of you feel like that. I'm watching everybody increase, move forward, advance in their life. And, and sometimes I, I like I get on, I know I get on their nerves because I'm subconsciously, and listen, this and it's gonna take a lot of maturity to admit this. I'm subconsciously because they're being blessed so much or they've got discipline in their life. I'm trying to pull them down to where I am because the reality is, is that I'm a little miserable about where I am in my life right now. Lord, deliver me from that too. I want to see my friends win. I want to see other people win. I want to see other people move forward. But Lord, you, I, I need you to do it for me too. Okay? I, I need you to do it for me too. Now watch this. Watch this. He, he, I just put that in there. That was for free. I just put, listen, if you got, if you got friends that are winning and they're showing discipline in their lives, don't just sit there and, 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 and say, Oh, I, I know you'd rather be doing this or you'd rather be doing this. Learn from them. Learn. 
see, uh, listen, and sometimes we can be closet haters. I hate this word haters, but I'm going to use it today. Sometimes we can be closet haters. If, if someone is doing or they're winning in an area of life, don't get jealous and envious of them. Learn from them. God put them in your life so you could get out of what you're in. He's using them as an example for you to win too, for you to have some success too. If you've got a friend that's winning, let me give you, so, so this thing can get up off of you today. Let, call them and tell them, you're winning in this area of your life and it's helping me. It's giving me inspiration. It's giving me invigoration. Thank you for winning. Thank you for being disciplined. Thank you for showing me and shining light on my way. You ought to do that today. It'll make you feel better. Glory to God. It'll make you feel better. Trust me. Congratulate your friends on them winning. Now, watch this. Verse 9, he said to him, then, or it says, then they said to him, because the whole Trinity is here, where is Sarah, your wife? Now, God already knows that he's promised Abraham this. He said, where's your wife? He said, here in the tent. Whenever God starts questioning, you know something big is getting ready to happen because he don't have to question anybody. He already knows the answer. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Now, there's something in this, in this whole statement <coughs> that God makes. He says, and certainly, and he said, certainly I will return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Now, I'm getting ready to reveal this, but this question that God is, 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 you, is, is power packed. It's, it's power packed. And I'm just going to read this in the in the Passion Translation. It's 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 so this is verse 10 of chapter 18 of Genesis. Now, in the Passion Translation, and hopefully it doesn't give it all away, it says, Then one spoke up and said, I will return about this time next year when your wife Sarah will certainly have a son. And then Sarah overheard it for uh for she was at the tent door, not far behind him. Okay. Now, I just didn't read that part of the verse, but listen, here's, here's what it is. He says, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. That's nine months. I want, I want you to get this because this is going to, this is going to help, help somebody. Abraham and Sarah had been trying to have a son between them, trying and trying, doing everything. And you know what this means, everything humanly possible. For them, and it hasn't worked to the point that you know the story that Abram went on to Hagar and they had a son, Ishmael. Blessed son, not the promised son. And there's a difference between having God's blessing and having God's promise. And that's a whole other conversation because we would have to get into the branch that came from Ishmael, which eventually became Islam. And then the other branch of the promised son of Jesus. We'll get into the historicity of that at some point. But I just want you to know that they were tired. And God says, according to the time of life, which meant nine months. He, he said, this thing is going to happen according to the time of life. Behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Now, this meant a few things. It meant nine months, but it also meant that Abraham, out of his loins, there would be perpetuity in the earth, meaning that his lineage, his name would not die when he died. And now we're talking about legacy because God is just not trying to bless you. He's blessing you generationally. God just doesn't think individual. God is thinking of something lasting. He's thinking of something longing. He, he, he's thinking individual. I mean, generationally, he wants to, I, I want you to begin to get in your mind the things that God wants to do, not only for you, watch this, but the things that God wants to do through you. He wants to do some things through you. And this is what he's telling Abraham. And this is what he's explaining. This will be for you. It will be through you and it will last longer. 
than you can ever live on the earth. Glory to God. Glory to God. God thinks generationally. People will be able to know what happened to you and it will be a landmark in their life. And just like we're reading about Abraham's life and Sarah's life, and we're able to get some encouragement and some invigoration and we're able to be renewed by their story and still believe God. This was thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And look how this is still sustaining us. Look at how this is still blessing us. Look at look and see how this is still strengthening us thousands of years later. God says, I want to do the same thing with you that when people, your descendants, when they look at your story and they're going to say, my God, Ebony, listen, you remember what God did with Grandma Ebony? You remember what he did with Grandma Ruby? You remember what he did with Grandpa Willie, Grandpa Morgan? He, he He's saying, I'm going to make this so big that for generations to come, not just listen, you've got enough stuff in your own life that you can grab faith for. But people are going to be blessed and be able to believe in God because of what God not only does for you, but does through you. Somebody type in the comments. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than me. Glory to God. It's bigger than me. This is what Abraham is doing. And God is trying to get him to see the enormity, the astronomical nature of what he's doing in his life. And I want you to see the same thing. God wants me to see the same thing. He says, you will have a son. And watch this. This was the thing they couldn't do. Glory to God. No matter how much they tried in their own power. Remember, I said that God has a part and you have a part. Now that preparation, that sacrifice, that worship, that's your part. But then God's still going to come on the back end and remind you that this cannot, the fulfillment of this, the conclusion cannot be done without me. It cannot be done without me. This is something he has to do. But that, that preparation, that sacrifice, that worship puts us in the position because we're behaving and then we're demonstrating to God, we really believe you. And that moves me from believing to knowing. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than me. Glory to God. Come on, give God a hand for his word. I got to stop right there because I'm coming back for part two on Friday. Come on, come on. We just got a, a few more things. Uh, everybody just stay around for a little bit right now. Glory to God. Come on. Glory to God. This this got this this has me thinking, of course, of Ephesians three and twenty. Of course, it has me thinking about that. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. <clears throat> I wrote a song about this um, uh, about a year and a half or so ago. And uh, and I'm just, you know, the the I need uh, you know, some verses to go with this song, but I just it was based on Ephesians three and twenty, and uh, I'm not just gonna let you hear it there, uh, but it, it blessed me. I was just, you know, <coughs> riding in the car. It's literally the scripture itself. It's the, literally the scripture. But here it goes. Now I want to hear him say it more. Exceedingly abundantly, I know all your commands. Your things. Say it again. Now I want to hear him say it more. Exceedingly abundantly, I know all your commands. Your things I should say. According to the power of Glory to God. And that's what I'm keeping on my mind. That's what I'm keeping on my mind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen.
Come on, give God another hand for his work. Woo-wee! Holy Spirit is pouring out. He's pouring out. He's pouring out. He's pouring out. Listen, if you are in the Oklahoma City area this Thursday, tomorrow, please, get if, if you've never been to Gospel Chat, move some stuff around. There, there, I'm telling there, there is stuff that goes on. God speaks. It's really a special time. It's really a special time. Uh, we've got refreshments there and everything. And of course, you know, it's absolutely free. If you're in Oklahoma City or any of the surrounding areas, even if you are an hour, an hour and a half away in Tulsa, I'm telling you, it'll be worth to drive. Uh, we, we speak about the too good to be true news, which is the gospel. And uh, you're able to answer, ask questions. I'm telling you, it's it's an amazing time. It's an amazing time. If you can get there, you can take a screenshot of this. I get there. Just just get there and see. Uh, and you'll be able to really just, in terms of the word "wusa," just keeps coming up to me. <laughs> and here's the reason why. Because most places that we're not able to even rest in the rest that Jesus provided for us because there's just so much religion around. But I'm telling you, there's a freedom that you experience and you'll get addicted to it. So whatever you got to do, get in the building. Just get there. Just just get there. Get there. There's going to be some great stuff. Uh, you have a lot of aha moments there. Amen. Amen. You, you will. You will. We really appreciate you. And then uh, thank you again for those of you who gave. Uh, and uh, and I've just, you know, I've contacted some of you. Uh, I, I, maybe you missed the email or whatever the case may be. But thank God I'm going to be able to talk. Owner of the Grace Awakening Network. OK, the the, the Grace and Naked, uh, Awakening Network. And we thank God um, for for that. And I just need uh, some of you just to kind of just check your email there and I'll, I'll get you there today so we can just go ahead and do that. We really, really, really appreciate you uh, for all that you are doing. Glory to God. And so then we, we will be able to start. We'll be able to, to start. And let me check one more thing just to make sure because I got two places that I can check and get this thing in here so we can start next month. Amen. Start this thing right, right, right on time. Uh, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. All right. So that's good. Thank you. 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 Now, uh, for those of you, uh, well, let me, let me say this. Thank you for supporting morning prayer as long as you have. It's been four years and now, uh, and it's so, it's so good. Uh, thank Adelaide. I'm praying for you. I'm reading this now. Yes, yes, yes. Praying for you now. Believe God has already heard you. Listen, folks, thank you for supporting the ministry in ways. Thank you for those 10 people that are going to support me on the grace awakening network we thank you for those and then those of you who support the the ministry we're looking i'm i'm going to do an equipment upgrade here very soon and then we're going to be uh doing some international streaming i've been getting asked over and over and over and over again can you stream this to us directly or pick one saturday out of the month and i, I just want to thank you in advance for supporting the ministry as you have received freely give freely give and be a generous supporter of the ministry this is a chance for you to partner and uh i'm going to even be making this more official i've got my patreon folks uh but even for morning prayer i'm going to be making this more uh official uh in terms of you partner with the ministry, but this is just free will giving. If you've been blessed at all, if you were blessed at all today, 
The scripture talks about if you've received something, this is in Galatians 6, if you've received something naturally, go ahead and receive it spiritually. Or, or uh, I mean, if you receive something spiritually, I turn that around, then render something natural to the person. The scripture says, muzzle not the ox that treads out the corn. Now, you that's old King James. If someone is plowing the field for you and they're the ones that are doing this so that you can eat, make sure that they eat while they work. All right. So just thank God for 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 that. And if and if you're looking uh, uh, if you're looking for, uh, you know, just go to first Corinthians chapter nine. You can find that uh, I try to be as scriptural as possible. But just so you know, just I'll, I'll read this in the easiest version. <clears throat> People are like, well. You know, why do you, you need money? And and, and here's, I, I like to talk kingdom. I don't like to talk anything else. Paul said this to the Corinthian church. He says, am I not as free as anyone else? Am I not an apostle? Haven't I seen Jesus our Lord with my own eyes? Isn't it because of my work that you belong to the Lord? Even if others think I'm not an apostle, I certainly am to you. You yourselves are proof that I'm the Lord's apostle. This is my answer to those who question my authority. Don't we have the right to live in your homes and share your meals? Don't we have the right to bring a believing wife with us as other apostles and the Lord's brothers do and as Peter does? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have to work to support ourselves? What soldier has to pay his own expenses? What farmer plants a vineyard that doesn't have the right to eat some of his fruit? What shepherd cares for a flock of sheep and isn't allowed to drink some of the milk? Am I expressing merely a human opinion or does the law say the same thing? For the law of Moses says you must not uzzle, muzzle an ox to keep it from eating as it treads out the grain. Was God only thinking about oxen when he said this? Wasn't he actually speaking to us? Yes, it was written for us so that one who plows and the one who threshes the grain might both expect a share of the harvest. Since we have planted spiritual seed among you, aren't we entitled, entitled to a harvest of physical food and drink? If you support others who preach to you, Shouldn't we have an even greater right to be supported? But we have never abused or used this right. And so Paul, Paul explains that it's just some great stuff. It's just it's just great stuff. And when I read this as a person who was serving under someone else, it blew my mind. It, it blew my mind. So thank you for your gifts and know that you are not participating in something where somebody's going to go do some crazy stuff you're you're good ground this is good ground and i believe you're good ground so when i'm coming up here every monday wednesday and friday i'm i'm giving every single thing that i have to you because god wants you to have it and i believe he's called me to you and so then so then your response may not be every week your response then is to give unto the kingdom of God through a person who has been called by God. I hope that makes sense. Amen. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So again, gospel chat. And then some of you uh, won't be getting emails today. We'll be getting a call because I want to make sure that uh, we get going on this next month uh, by the by the 15th or the, at least by the 15th of next month. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. Listen. You can continue the conversation in the comments and get more revelation as you watch it over and over and over again. But man, what a day today. Share this with somebody. God bless you. See you soon. Ephesians chapter three, verses 20 and 21, a benediction. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations.